You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, uh, we answer four fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. But the way we open the episode is with an intro portion. It's where we cover current events. We talk about scientific studies. We mention our sponsors. Today's intro portion was 32 minutes long. After that, we got into the fitness questions. So here's what went down in today's episode. We open up by talking about the craziness at the Capitol. What the hell is going on? Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of hypocrites over there were talking crap about one side. Now they're doing the same thing. Yep. Totally the same thing. Insane. Which led us to talk about our survival skills. How hmm. would What could we offer the world if shit went down? Yeah, I'm going to start hunting. Then I talked about the founder of Alibaba and how he seems to have gone missing. Uh, we talk about the most anticipated albums of 2021. That was a great conversation. Then we talked about raw milk, uh, the difference between raw milk and pasteurized milk. Uh, and then we talked about heating up or cooling down our beds for our spouses and ourselves with the Chili Pad. Now, Chili Pad is a product. It's water-cooled or heated. It goes over your bed, and you can actually adjust the temperature of your bed and maintain that temperature of the of your bed. And it has two sides. Some of the products have two sides. So if you like your bed side of the bed warm, your wife uh, or husband likes it cold, you can do one side cold, one side hot. Really, really good stuff. My sleep has improved tremendously since using the Chili Pad. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a massive discount. You get 22% off. Go check them out. Go to chilitechnology.com. That's C-H-I-L-I technology.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code pump22. That's the word pump and the number 22 for 22% off. After that, we got into answering the questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know what the importance is of a post-workout meal. The next question was, uh, how? what are some good measurable mobility goals the third question, this person wants to know what are some good stretches for flat feet. And the final question, this person wants to know if we've ever had to change our circle of friends in order to improve our mental uh, health Multiple and times. well-being. Also, we extended our end-of-year promotion last year uh, into the 10th of this month. Here's what we did. We took multiple workout programs and we packaged them together for three different types of people. So we designed three bundles, each one lasting about nine and a half months uh, for your workouts. In other words, all your workouts are planned out for you for nine plus months. This means we tell you what exercises to do, uh, how many sets, how many reps. There's videos that you get access to teaching you how to do the exercises. They're very effective. It's like having a trainer, uh, but it's online. Now, here's the three different types of bundle. We did one for beginners. It's called the new to weightlifting bundle. We did one for uh, intermediate lifters. This one's called the body transformation bundle. Intermediate meaning if you've been working out consistently for about six months to a year. And then the third bundle is, uh, you guessed it, for advanced lifters. This is for people who've been working out for one plus a year consistently. It's called the new year extreme intensity bundle. It will take you to the next level. By the way, all three bundles include a year of free access to our private forum, so you can ask fitness questions or have people critique your form. Or you can even talk to myself, Adam, or Justin. We're on there as well, periodically. Talk to us. Now, you can find out more about these bundles or sign up for these bundles at mapsdecember.com. Again, that's maps, M-A-P-S, December.com. I cannot wait for all this bullshit to end. You see what's going on right now? <sighs> you, you see we got uh, you got pro-Trump supporters that are... Crashing the storming the Capitol, yes, storming the Capitol, yeah, busting down doors, getting in fights with cops. This is so it's embarrassing. Right yeah, now. it's so bad. It's it, it's it's embarrassing uh, to watch. What what is both extremes have just been super embarrassing. What has happened is that they the the belief in the elective process has been systematically destroyed by both sides, yeah. by both sides, because it, it, and it's this has been this has been happening for a long time. One side wins, the other side fights it tooth and nail. Uh, you know the, the the hashtag not my president, right? When when Trump won, I mean, you had mm -hmm. uh, constantly saying that the election is not uh, legit. Now they're doing it on now. Now the right is doing it, and so when you keep doing that enough, yeah. it, people stop accepting elections. And if when that happens, democracy is over. Yeah, so you this lose hope in yeah. in how everything works. Yep, yep. And so this is yeah. So you, you, I, I know you can't wait for it to end. I feel like it's going to just continue to spiral until... Really? Yeah. It, and, get, it gets worse? You know what I hate? I, I feel like this has been 
kind of like spurred on by outside players. You know, they go on social I still media. I think it's a psyops. Yes, and they go really in there good. and they just stoke the fire on one side, stoke the, and they know there's going to be a reaction until both sides just get fueled. Meanwhile, up. we're all getting played. I don't give a oh, shit yeah. if you're left totally. or right in the middle where you're. Everybody at. else is being affected and, and suffering. Right? Yes, totally. So so so. I know it's so. I just, uh, what a depressing way to open this episode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't help it. We were literally just getting ready to get fired up, and I open up my Instagram, and what's in my feed? Like crazy is all this bullshit on you know both sides. Of course, you know. You, it's look. It's like okay. It's like you're playing a sport, and in order for a sport to be a sport, you have to believe in the rules, right? Yeah. Like if you're playing basketball, and then someone grabs a ball and says, "I'm not dribbling," they just run with the ball yeah. and throw it in, and then they count it as a point. And then what's the other team going to start doing? Yeah. They're going to run with the ball, yeah. and they're going to start. And no one starts. You have to have a fundamental belief in our election process. Otherwise, it all breaks down. And mm -hmm. so they're just they just keep attacking it both sides. Somebody it doesn't matter who wins. I feel like this would have happened if if Trump won too. I feel like oh, the other side course. would do the same thing. Nobody but. wins and we all lose. That's what happens. Yes. And that's yes. what's happening right now. We have to have faith in 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 the process. Otherwise, uh, and let me tell you, historically, <laughs> historically, when democracies are to fall, right, what takes over is a way worse every time. Yep. Is way worse. It's something yeah. very very tyrannical. You don't yeah. want that. Oh no. yeah. You definitely don't want that. Yeah. No, it's no. not not fun. To anyway, talk about. so yeah. So are you guys getting ready for the civil war? I mean, <laughs> I've been training. No, so. we're in California. I mean, it takes like six months to get a gun. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about yes, it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm yeah. just lifting weights. You know what I mean? Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're not bunkering up yet. No, uh, I no. feel like yeah. I've, I've been I've been digging my backyard. I'm trying to find a natural well so I can have water. Are and, you really? No. Okay. No, I'm, not, I'm not getting crazy. <laughs> like that, honestly, though, if this this persists, you know, who knows? That might actually be a good idea. Yeah. No. Uh, you're, you're, do you have a well? Actually, I have a, a, a natural spring that goes through my property, so I actually had thought about that. I'm like, at least I have like a natural water source that's close by, <laughs> and put some like you know tablets in there to uh, you know get the bacteria out and kill it and, and drink it. I'm like, oh, I could I could survive, dude. You ever you, you know what's funny is like you, when you think if you just go through play through these mind games, you start to realize how little shit you actually know if shit went down. Like if there's no electricity, like I'm screwed. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I know. You ever seen it's, that meme where there's like uh, it's a it's a it's a meme and it says, oh man, if I could go back in time i would totally freak people out and then it shows this guy kind of looks like a hipster and he's sitting on a rock and he's talking obviously it looks like he's talking to people like in 1000 you know bc or whatever yeah, trying and, to explain the iphone and, and they're like so tell us how electricity works and he's like uh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. if you go back in time you're like dude we had iPhones. power lines they're like you yeah. did make us one show us how it works so i I don't know what I'm doing. Isn't that crazy? I know. Uh, yeah. it's, it's only getting worse, though, dude. Yeah. I don't know how any of that stuff works. What are, what are your guys' best survival skills? Do you have... <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's say... I can definitely I feel, fish. In, yeah, I feel like I could tackle the hunt. shit out of something and kill it. You know what I'm saying? If I had to. <laughs> what are you, you yeah. going to tackle well, I'm not. I, I can't admit that I can't... Tackle it? Yeah, yeah, because I definitely can't shoot a gun really accurate. I mean, I could shoot a gun, but I'm not... Like, I doubt there's I'm, a deer. Ah, I'm going to yeah, tackle him. Yeah, I my, hate to my, break my, it to you, but a deer will kick your ass right Well, well I didn't say he said a deer, you know? I don't know. I'm just trying to... Are you tackle a turkey? Yeah. Yeah, I could get a... Turkey tackler. Yeah, I get a turkey. You got to be... You got to catch it first? Yeah, I get a turkey. Those things are pretty easy, though. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, I shot, I shot squirrels as a kid, so I could get something like that. You That's know like, yeah, I'll barely feed you. Hey, whatever, I'll, I'll survive. You, you know how many gains you'll lose? No, you, uh, so like imagine this like post-apocalyptic, and you got to like have skills to be accepted into like a tribe. Like, right. what's your skill? Like, how do you how do you present yourself? Like, you're not a doctor. You're not like. What do you say to them? I'm gonna lead us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell I'll the leader that. Yeah, I'll tell yeah. everybody. What I'm just to gonna do. kill stuff. That's that's my role. I'll, I'll help that's gather. It. I'll gather the hunter. I'll help gather the guy that can create electricity. I'll help gather all those people. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I'll chop wood. Yeah. You know, I'll get that going. I'll be like, hey, look, do you guys need a good talker? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> like, give me something to talk about. Let me show you what yeah, I can do. I'll be the tribe representative. Yeah. Over here, yeah. I'll talk like, hey, yeah. do you got a shoulder pain? Let me show you some correctional exercise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll do the. We already Super have a physical valuable. therapist. Damn it. You know, uh, I'm totally shit. scared. Can't hunt. Can't do any of that stuff. I yeah. don't know, man. Yeah, I've never. Have you guys ever been hunting? Have you been hunting? I've been, yeah, just once. Yeah. So, I mean, I went I went uh, more times fishing. I'm more of a fisherman than anything else. But, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can fish. I can fish with yeah, you. See, yeah, see. We're you surviving, bro. I don't know about you, but we're surviving. Hold on a second. I mean, if we're a team, I think we're okay. All of us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, team. if it gets real bad, I mean, one of us could sustain the others pretty good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking well, at you, Justin. Yeah, we're eating Justin first for sure. Hey. <laughs> Maybe on, not, man. though, right now. I did, I did weigh in. because I'm the meatiest. <laughs> Actually, yeah. it's true, Adam. You're the... <laughs> 
<laughs> you're the one that goes down first. <laughs> I don't know if your meat would taste good though. Oh, oh why? Yeah. It's a little tough. <laughs> you know what I mean? Doug, Doug Too would, gamey. Doug would be the sweetest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. We, we can't. We can't eat Doug. He's yeah. gonna prepare it for us. Yeah. How do you? <laughs> it's true. Yeah. How do you? How would you fish without a, like a, a fishing pole and stuff? Ah, oh, right? you could do that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Oh, just, it was sticking. It was sticking a string, bro. We'll figure it out. String. Yeah. Just just find string. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You, uh, yeah. you guys watch too many oh, cartoons. Well, okay, yeah. wait a second. The apocalypse happens, and then there's nothing. All of yeah. a sudden, all the fishing poles <laughs> fucking just no, disappear. No, you can make those little like bamboo uh, traps, like I've, these little like. like you need I don't to need to make anything. I've got a fishing pole up a Truckee. We're oh, fine. You do? Uh, yeah. So even if oh, an apocalypse yeah. happens, we have one. So it's not like everything disappears. You, you have to walk up there though. That's pretty far. <laughs> yeah, you know. I, you're, when you watch those like uh, survival shows, uh, what was that show I was talking about a while ago? Alone. A lot alone. Yeah, yeah alone. Um, being near the water and fishing is key. Mm -hmm. That is the best way, you know, because fish typically you can find fatty fish. You get the proteins, the fat. They're easier to catch. Um, you don't have to chase them down. Mm -hmm. They're you know, they're, Dude, water is your most uh, you know valuable asset. I don't know about saying easier to catch, especially with what those guys get. They get nothing. What do you mean? They don't get anything. They don't get a fishing pole. They don't get bait. They don't get anything like that. Imagine oh, they make they make these like crazy like, traps and stuff. I know. Yeah, but so I saw one. So it was like okay, so it was like wood sticks mm -hmm. that started out wide, and yeah. then it comes down into like almost like a funnel. Yeah. And then you put it in front of uh, running water, so the running water is going through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the fish just swim. See the and hand they motion. Don't swim back. Yeah, this yeah. is the swimming motion. Yeah. So they get <laughs> caught in it. Yeah. And they get that, stuck. That, that works sometimes. You hate fish though. What I not when I catch it myself. Just, just it's always the fish sticks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's why we got Doug. Doug will save you, dude. Yeah, You're all right. yeah. All right. I can't even microwave it. Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Anyway, <laughs> hey, did you guys hear about uh, what's that guy's name that founded uh, Alibaba? Oh, Jack Whoa. Ma. Yeah. yeah. Did you hear about him? What happened? Uh, -uh. he's in hiding, right? Apparently, so hiding or missing? Which one is it? <laughs> Both. I'm guessing missing. So he, I guess he came out and spoke out against Chinese government policy or something like that. Oh, something, wow. yeah. He said something, right? That was a little critical. <laughs> mm. And then he was supposed to appear on some popular TV show. I think he's a judge on some popular TV show in that region, and he just didn't show up. Mm. And now they're not. They can't like find him. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, He's dude. Just laying low. Yeah, it sucks. Wow. Yeah, when you speak out against the state, I mean, it's uh, who knows what's what, what's really going. Well, on. Well, dude, he's he's one of the wealthiest people in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Alibaba is massive. Um, I I mean, they could they could surpass Amazon at some yeah. point. China's so strange to me because it's communist, but then you do have like examples like that of of, of some capitalism in there where people are killing it like that. Totally different than uh, Soviet Union cap, yeah. uh, communism. Much more different version. Yeah, much more market based. Still, still quite centrally planned, but different. Different, but yeah, Alibaba is. I know in volume surpasses mm. uh, Amazon uh, quite a bit, just in total amount of people. Um, Which one's more profitable? Uh, Amazon right now, but Alibaba's profits, let me think. I forgot what year it was. I want to say 2017, 18, or 18, 19. Their profits went up 144%, what? while Amazon's went up 50-something percent. I mean, 50-something percent profit. Did, it, did the article allude to why? They're, I think it's just the those emerging economies are just you know those because you're talking about like China 50 years ago, you know India 50 years ago for example you know th those countries were very very poor and they're emerging they're exploding in terms of oh interesting their wealth and all those people are using Alibaba to purchase uh, products and stuff hmm. so now you have a lot of you have a lot of family like in stock and investing right do, do does your family talk about like investing overseas much do you know much about that at all I don't you yeah. know but I think do we, they. Huh? Do they? Yeah, you know, when I talk to them about it, the problem with investing in international stuff is you have a you you've actually in injected uh, another uh, risk factor, which is currency. Hmm. So, let's say you invest in uh, I don't know, let's say you invest in a, a German company in a German you know, and it's it's not traded, let's say here or whatever, it's a, in their stock exchange or whatever. You invest in a German company, that company does well, but then the German currency drops in value to the American currency, kind of negates the potential profits. 
that you might have made. Mm. So there's always that risk. But then you could also, because you know, more risk equals more reward, right. you could also get the double reward of the company doing well plus the American currency doing well in comparison to the euro or whatever. Yeah. So that's the you know that's the whole. Well, we started kind of on a downer, but this year there are some some new albums coming out. I'm actually excited about who. Uh, so you got the Foo Fighters, which they put really? out like a single. Yeah, dude, they haven't had an album like forever. It yeah, like. no kidding. Yeah, and the new one I, I heard it, it kind of has like a Ramstein kind of uh, vibe to it. It's it's pretty good. Do us? Yeah, it's kind of got like a, a beat <laughs> like that. You like I, that? But it obviously I do. It doesn't sound exactly like that, but <laughs> you know it's pretty good. And oh, I have to remember because Rob Zombie is coming out with him, but he has like a hilarious uh, He's title. He's coming out with a new one. Yeah, dude, it's called the Lunar Injection Kool Aid Eclipse Conspiracy. That's, <laughs> that's, wait, wait, that's, that's the name. That's the title of his album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then Evanescence, uh, you know, is one of my guilty pleasures. So uh, they're coming out with a new. Yeah, I know it is because this morning we're all working out. <laughs> Justin has his his his. Uh, I own it, dude. His what playlist on, and it's going yeah. through. It's like heavy, you know, like yeah. you know, metal and He's good shit. Crazy. And all of a sudden, yeah. dude. Going under. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh no, you guys uh, saw that, huh? Yeah, I'm fully convinced Rob Zombie is uh, a psychopath. He, he's yeah, he's interesting. Have he's you ever a really watched, interesting guy? Have you ever watched his movies? Oh, they're they're so dark. They're, it's, they're crazy. It's disturbing. It is disturbing, but it's I, excessively disturbing. It is. I think he and it. I mean, Zombie can't be his real last name. I mean, is like, <laughs> come on, like. <laughs> He's really owning that, you know. He's just like I'm all in, like the death and and crazy monster, you know, Abilia and all that stuff. Yeah, I always picture people like that to be like so opposite though when you meet him. Yeah. Like I feel like he would be totally different. Like, that's a, an image. I feel like if I was like this rock he's like singer, a computer engineer. Yeah, I would he's be a gardener. I would I'm be Rob no, Zombie. totally. I'd be like this, you know, Marilyn Manson, Rob Zombie image. But then at home, I'd be like so chill. Yeah. I just I feel like I would want because I feel like if you're the if you're exactly the same as this this image that you've portrayed and everybody's fallen in love with and is talked about and all shit, and then you're also got to be that person at home all the time. Like you never get a break or get away. So I think the best way to separate that would be to be like this character. Mm. Be 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 whatever that is because that's what makes well, my it's money. Like Alice Cooper, like, he's totally like that. Like really? he's like super chill. He just plays golf and he's like really conservative. <laughs> yeah, you know? and, but he's on stage. He's like got snakes on him. He's like Bleh. actually that's a good point because uh, Ozzy Osbourne, right? His persona was. I mean, he literally bit the head yeah. of a live bat Insane. off. On stage, which I, apparently for COVID probably. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn it, that's where it came from. Sorry. I mean, apparently the story is he didn't know it was alive. Anyway, the guy's got crazy stories. He out crazied. Uh, who was it that they they toured with? Was it uh, uh, Nikki Six? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Where he he snorted, Motley, sniffed Motley, a line of Motley ants. Crew, yeah. yeah, he snorted up a line of ants and, and peed on the yeah, deck of the pool. Some of the most epic stories. I've ever but heard. then remember what was that show on MTV where they showed the the Osbournes? It was a, the reality show. Did you guys yeah, watch yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And it, it it's he's like, chill. He was totally lovable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was like this great dad. You yeah. know. Yeah. I mean, they cussed I, a lot, but yeah, that was about about can never understand them. Sharon. That's about it. Speaking of dad stuff, I wanted to ask. You saw, and it is a little early, probably. But have you thought about um, the, what you guys are going to do milk wise with the baby? Like transition from breast milk. Obviously, you're doing all breast milk right now. Mm-hmm. At the end of you know uh, Jessica breastfeeding, will you transition to Make dairy milk, almond milk? Will you do raw milk? Have you thought about what you guys will do? Yeah, we're going to do whey protein. Stupid. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not true. Sprinkle a little creatine in there. No, um, probably. Um, I, I would love to find. Well, my son. When my son was a baby, uh, you could buy raw milk at Whole Foods. They used to sell it. It was non uh, homogenized, non pasteurized, mm-hmm. uh, but from really, really good, well sourced raw milk. And that's what I gave my son. I would like to find that again and give it to him you know as a supplement uh in addition yeah we brought that up on one of the last episodes and someone dm me that in the uk the way it works is the farmers are the only people that can actually do that Mm -hmm. so you have to go directly to a farmer and they can and they have the right drop it off in one of those like glass containers probably do you know what the history of that is why you can't sell it yeah. By the way, have you seen these raids on farmers that in America? Yeah. What do they say? Like, because of bacteria what? or whatever, like there's like a risk for being sick? Bro, so, okay, I'll tell you the history in a second. But there are videos of farms getting raided by, oh, like, yeah. government officials because they're selling raw milk. And it looks like a drug bust. Yeah. They're going in there and arresting people and it's everything. Like prohibition. They're just oh, it's crazy. Breaking so, everything. So the story is that uh, way back in the day, they, you know, milk wasn't pasteurized. 
but the cows were very unhealthy. They kept them super cramped quarters. They fed them something called Brewer's Mash, which was, I guess, the waste products from uh, beer brewing companies. And the milk was just toxic. In fact, it even had a a blue tint to it. Uh And so kids would get sick. People would get sick from drinking this milk. Mm. And then Louis Pasteur, who's the scientist who discovered that you could pasteurize, heat things up and kill bacteria, they did that with milk and then made laws and said it has to be pasteurized. Mm. But what a lot of people don't know is that if a cow is healthy, lots of space and whatever, the milk is is fine. In well, fa- the fine. reason why it's yeah. uh, the reason why it's not ideal is because when you cook it like that, you also don't you kill some of the digestive enzymes that are naturally found in it, right? You do. You, you mm-hmm. so um, some people who have issues with not me. I have so many issues with dairy that it doesn't matter if it's raw or not. But some people can't have pasteurized dairy, but they can have raw milk and it doesn't bother them. Right. It also doesn't go bad. Do you know that? You leave out pasteurized milk and oh, it I goes sour. Know that. You leave out raw milk and it it uh, turns in. I forgot what it turns oh, into cheese. Uh, no, but it doesn't. It doesn't go bad and say because it has beneficial bacteria. <clears throat> uh-huh. I yeah. didn't know that. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. You know the reason why I bring this up is uh, just recently Max is starting to and it's I notice it at night. Um, so this is by the time he's had a second or third bottle for the day uh, of I think we do six to seven ounces. Mm. Um, he's like he'll just be we'll be sitting there reading and he'll just he'll just throw up. And he'll spit up some of the milk like that. And originally, you know, the the, the thought that Katrina and I had is a lot of times I, I'm playing and wrestling with him. You're at, shaking him too much? Well, yeah. She's like, you know, oh, maybe you're you're upsetting his stomach, you know, after he just finished his bottle. And so she'd always be giving me a hard time, like, stop wrestling with him. He just finished his bottle. You're going to make him throw up. And I'd be like, okay. So I stopped doing that, right? And he still has continued to do this. And it's hmm. not consistent enough for me to like be able to tease out other things. Like mm. maybe there's something else in the diet that's happening, but... It's really strange to me now that he start and he didn't do this before. It just started happening right now. The only thing I could think of is that you know it's we're at a year and a half right now, so maybe he's developing a dairy issue. He's right. So I my the- I told Katrina I said you know maybe we should look into trying to find raw milk from right now. He does vitamin D milk, right? So you know your full uh, vitamin D uh, milk. And he's been doing that since right right after we transitioned from breast milk, we went into vi- mm-hmm. vitamin D at the one year mark. So it's been about five six months that we've been doing this. And my theory is that, is that maybe he's starting to build some sort of an intolerance to it. And so, he, and it's not until he's had two or three in the day and that third mm-hmm. one, he's rejecting it. You can try, uh, I think it's called a, maybe Doug can look this up. A two milk. Mm-hmm. I think it is where there's a, a type of protein that they, 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 they uh, breed these cows to produce. That's easier to digest. It's called a two. I think the, the bot, the carton will say a two on it. And I've had uh, people tell me that they can tolerate, because everybody knows, if you listen to podcasts, that I can't have dairy. So I always get messages from people, try this, try that. Mm-hmm. Um, A2, I've had a lot of people tell me. Oh, you guys brought this up last time. Yeah. yeah so yeah, apparently the, the dairy, the protein in there is less reactive. <clears throat> so he says easier on digestion. So I don't know, maybe try that. Did you guys know too, there were studies done on uh, pasteurized milk where they were giving it to kittens versus raw milk. And or and they found that the kittens given pasteurized milk would would ish, would develop problems, hmm. health issues, whereas oh, wow. the ones given raw milk were not. And you can't oh. apparently you can't. I, I'm sure I'm going to get corrected if I'm wrong. So I'm, maybe I'm wrong here, but I I've read that you can't give pasteurized milk to calves because they won't thrive. Hmm. They have to have hmm. raw milk. Hmm. So it makes you think it does. Yeah. Yeah. You can also try goat milk. Hmm. My my cousin did that with her kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and well, right now I'm in the process of even in trying to convince Katrina that it could be that. You know, she mm-hmm. thinks it's something something else. And I brought that up, and I said, you know, we might want to consider messing around with the milk if that's the case, because I do know that he's having at least two or three bottles every day, and this wasn't something that was kind of happening before. Mm-hmm. But again, what I don't know yet is I haven't teased out other, she's with him all day long and she's feeding him other stuff. It could be something else mm-hmm. in his diet. And then all of a sudden, but is it a lot? Does he throw up a lot or is it just a little? Eh, it's just a little, it's not, what's well, it's, it's, it's de- and it's not like a, so there's a difference between like spit up and throw up, right? right? It's not like spit up. Like he's sick. Yeah. Right. Or burping up after he's, it's not that we're past that type of stuff. It's literally, he'll just be sitting there and whoop, it'll, he'll throw up on his shirt and then I got to change, you know, wipe mm-hmm. him down, change his shirt and it smells. Is terrible. he having too much maybe? I don't think that because he would love to have more if I gave him more. Really? Yeah, we cut him off at like the seven ounce mark, and he would he would drink double that if we let him. But we don't. We Dang. just yeah. So I don't know. I, mm-hmm. I I just thought maybe I'd ask you what 
your thoughts were on that. And then if you, what your plans were, like if you guys were going to go into regular milk or you're going to do goat milk or what you, have you guys talked about that yet? Yeah, we have. Yeah, we talked about it. Um, I, that's what we'll start. I'm going to see if I can find raw milk. If I can't, then I'll probably go with the full fat A2 be, milk oh, A2. Uh, yeah, and, and, and test that. And speaking of babies, this is so, so funny. So, you know, obviously he, uh, my son's, he's only two months old, right? So we're in the middle of him just completely taking over everything and poor Jessica can't get a, a minute to herself. Mm. Uh, he feeds every other hour still. So anyway, this morning I wake up and in the morning what I do before I come here is I make her breakfast and bring it to her. So at least she has one less thing to worry about. She's got her coffee. I'll bring her coffee, toast, eggs or bacon um, and some tea and I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring it to her. I'll bring it to bed and she has a thing. So this morning she, she had a rough night last night, right? Uh, he was up every other hour or whatever. So I wake up this morning. I feel so bad for her. It's made me feel terrible. We wake up this morning. I'm getting ready. And she goes, hey, can I ask you for a favor? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. She goes, instead of making me breakfast, can you just watch him so I can take a shower instead? I'm like, I'm like damn it. <laughs> Babe, you, gotta, you have to choose between uh, a shower, shower and eating. <laughs> yeah. That's the level we're at. Yeah, right I felt there. so bad, yeah. you know? Damn, oh, it's yeah. brutal. In fact, yeah. last night, she, 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 he was crying or whatever, and she, she woke me up. She said, did you say you were going to change the baby? I'm like. <laughs> I was half a, I was half asleep, so I was half asleep. So I'm like, "Huh, what happened?" And then she's nothing happened, and I think I fell back. And I woke up later, and I'm like, "Did you ask me? Or did I, was I dreaming? Did you ask me if I could change the baby?" And she's like, "I had a dream. You said you would." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh my god, that's what you're dreaming about." <laughs> <laughs> this amazing dream that you woke up to change the baby. Uh, you know what's man. happened to me recently with the kid that so bad. I I and I vowed that this would happen, right? You know, it, it's so funny, and and I knew that this would happen uh, as because I said things like oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, and everybody's like, yeah, we'll see, you know, we'll see. <laughs> and so, and I, and I'm the first to admit when shit that didn't go the way I planned. I talked about the television thing the other day that that was like originally planned that. We're going to wait, wait, wait so long. And then you realize like, oh, wow, what a powerful tool this thing is yeah. that we can use when we absolutely need <laughs> yeah. it, right? Yeah. But I feel like we do use it judiciously, right? We don't just put them in front of it like crazy. And so <clears throat> the latest thing that I, I said that I definitely have gone back on or I just I've lost this battle. I look at it. I don't look at it as like a, I've gone back on what I said. It's more like I just fucking threw my hands up and said I give up. And that was I tried to make this rule early on. That I said, Katrina, can we stick to this and agree to that? Once he gets to a certain amount of toys in this room that he's got enough and that doesn't mean that people can't buy him things or you can't buy him you things. You're just throwing away an old one. Exactly. Arm. If one comes in, another one goes out. Like we just, can we agree that otherwise our house, and then, yeah, 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 we could do that. Well, that just, that shit went out the door, right? And I remember my buddies who were like, and I have two friends that remember are a year and a year and a half ahead of me, right, with their kids. And they would send me these videos of like their living room and their and shit, and it was just I was like, oh my god, I refuse it's to. It's not let, gonna take yeah, over. I refuse for my house. I've been to your house, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what it looks like no. now. I refuse to let my house look like this. You know, know what I'm saying? Like it is not gonna have like that. Yeah, and having I, a pristine, clean house is just like oh, unreasonable. No, Dude, you have not to with, change not your, with little kids. You have to change your expectation. Yeah, yeah. you know. So so here's what I so here's what we did. And Jessica's good about this because I'm kind of weird about it. And Jessica's like, why don't you? So here's what she does. So my daughter is older, right? She's 11, but she still loves all her shit. She likes stuffed animals. So she'll have like a million stuffed animals in her room. So Jessica says, I told her, I said, we got to get rid of some of this. And I'm like, let me ask, let me ask her. And, and Jessica says, no, if you ask her, she's going to say no. Just take a bunch of it <laughs> and see if she notices. Put it in a garbage bag and put it in the that, garage. That's what we And do. wait a week yeah. and see if she notices. She never notices. So I take a bunch. We just of, do it when we're when we're cleaning the house. Yeah, just start taking them and like putting them in the attic. Yeah, and you store it and you wait. And a then week. we get rid of it. Exactly, yeah. and then they don't say anything. You throw it away. Yeah, you just <laughs> do that. the hack at them right there. Okay, it's I like I like yeah. that. I'm gonna stop asking. I'm just gonna start just doing do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah. take it and the ones that they don't even think about. You know that are in the corner somewhere. Or whatever, yeah, that it hasn't moved. It. Yeah. yeah, for the last month. You know. Yeah, no, I like that idea. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah. a good strategy. You just take it, store it, and whatever. What about so? How's Jessica as far as like her temperature and hormones? I know what when Katrina was about where she's at right now, I felt like it was so inconsistent yes. with temperature and stuff. Up like and down. Yeah. Yeah, up and down. One minute, it's uh, she's got the door open because she's too hot, and then the next minute, she's got my robe on 
and she's in the blanket because she's <laughs> too cold. Now my son, he he likes to be warm. Was 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 your boy like that? He uh, likes to be really warm. Well, Katrina, that's a that's a that's up for debate. <laughs> 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 Katrina thinks so, and I'm like, nah, he's got me in him. He doesn't like to be that hot, you know. She's like, no, he wants the room to be 72, and he wants to be in this fucking flannel jumper. You know, I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, no, he does it. And here's a, this is how I argue it, right? <clears throat> you can tell the way they sleep. Yeah, they sleep better if so, they're comfortable. Well, I mean, no, you could tell if he's cold or hot by the way he sleeps. Uh. If he's hot, he'll be all stretched out and tossing and turning. If he's mm -hmm. cold, he gets in a little ball and he tucks his hands and his knees in. Then I know he's too cold. Yeah. Yeah. So I push the limit until I see that. I'm like, I want it lower, lower, yeah. you know, lower. <laughs> and then he curls into a ball. And I'm like, okay, I'll go get him a blanket. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> oh, I used to that's feel how bad I do about this because like downstairs is significant, <laughs> like 10 degrees colder, like in my house than that's upstairs. Where your kids are, right? We're upstairs, they're downstairs, right? They're in like the chilly box. Box. And uh, so basically, like I, I like we we went to like a, a different place where they were. Uh, we had the temperature at like seventy something, and they were just like sweating. And they were getting up like every hour. You know, it's like anytime the the heat is up uh, for them now, like, since they're so acclimated to that, mm -hmm. like they get like terrible sleep. So I just think it's it's really what you expose them to, and then they acclimate to. Yeah. It. Well, sp <clears throat> speaking of which, so for my son, I was just saying he likes it warm, and we know this because. What we did now is if we place him in his his bed, because we have the little bassinet or whatever next to our bed. Yeah. If we place him in there, he would, like, no matter, I don't care how softly or gently you do it, you put him in there. I mean, I could give myself five minutes to move two inches or whatever. As soon as he lays down on that and I move and move away, hmm. he wakes up. So yeah. I'm like, we're trying to figure out what it is. And we're thinking it's the temperature sh shift. If he's on my body, he's warm. As soon as I put him on in the bed, it's not cold but it's cool right mm. yeah so what we did is we made like a mini like chili pad for him so you know we have the chili pad for our bed right, right. they don't make one for kids so what i did is i got a, I got a heated heating blanket and i'll turn it up get it nice and warm and then turn it off mm. and then put them on so oh, it's already warm and it works oh, yeah so now he lays down and it's already kind of toasty because oh it, interesting and it works and oh it works wow that's, yeah. been, that's i was gonna bring up too because we've been working out more consistently and everything like my, i feel like my body temperature has gone up a few degrees so i'm always like having to open the window now besides yeah. that and so courtney's been like just yelling at me for yeah that. no i mean adam so i just got the chili pepper adam noticed again. he was telling me uh, yesterday how hot you were <laughs> 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 Man, He's now, that makes me uncomfortable. Now, do you guys have the? Is your chili pad the separate one yet, where you have a yeah, control? Yeah, yeah, I have a I have one specifically for me. Yeah, and then uh, she only does she only does hers if she wants to warm up. So yeah, that's the only time she uses it. That's mm -hmm. how Katrina is. Katrina yeah. has no no intentions of ever cooling the bed. Off. I know. I'm like, but it's seriously not even summertime. Life changing for me. I'm not even joking. Yeah, not even summertime does she want it cool off of that. I'm like, how do you? And she climbs in with like. Flannels and stuff like pajamas. I'm like, how, yeah. do, you, how do you do I can't that? Do pajamas? I sleep in my box. Yeah, and then it. and then she wants to cuddle. I'm like, get out of here with <laughs> it. Don't touch me. <laughs> like, you have flannel pajamas on in now, these like all these sheets. Now you warm. sleep. You Ugh. sleep full naked, right? Yeah, everything. Yeah. If shit to. goes down, you gonna run out your house naked or what? Yeah, yeah. Like, whatever. Yeah. 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 I mean, don't you think that's less? You're that's probably scared. Exactly. Either. That's more scary. Yeah. Could you imagine you're breaking into a house just trying to rob some shit and some yeah. naked yeah. ass dude comes running after you. a knife with you? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> naked dude tackling you. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, right? right here. Yeah, that's what I would do. Like, damn, I'm gonna get you right here. <laughs> <laughs> Swinging my hips well, around. Finally. Yeah. Hey. Hold still, you fucker. Hey, you're late to the party. Morty Wood is still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Dude, I've been waiting for someone to walk into my house. Like waiting this. for this. <laughs> <laughs> like that scene from Pulp Fiction. Yeah. <laughs> and that guy breaks into the house. Oh, and they, oh we got a new gimp. Yeah. No, I, for, so I uh, I sleep in my underwear, but I've had, you guys know how I wear my Italian, you know, bikini brief or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. You wear that to bed too? Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. weird. It's kind of comfortable. That dude, doesn't, doesn't yeah, rub on like, the inside of your thighs. You gotta let them breathe, dude. It's more free, dude. But it, let so, the boys breathe. So here's the deal, bro. So you guys, I'm heavy right now, right? Yeah. So yeah. my, and I like to wear them. So now they're like a G string. It's a thong now. Yeah. I have to fix it all the time now. It's what a on. terrible <laughs> visual! Yeah, so I gotta buy. I gotta so buy many mixed emotions. I gotta, I gotta buy bigger ones, bigger in uh, the seat. Oh yeah. my god, dude! <laughs> <laughs> Can we put some visuals up, Andrew? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he, yeah he knows I DM'd him. Yeah. 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 All right. First question is from Headley Alicia. What is the importance of a post-workout meal, and how quickly should you have it? Post workout meals, God, overrated, I remember, totally right. Oversold. I remember when the anabolic window. I believe this so much. So did I. 
that if I didn't have a post-workout meal or shake, I used to literally feel like my workout was a waste. Yeah. Like, oh what God. am I even doing here? Yeah, well, here and, and I think we have to make it clear that that doesn't mean that the, the science that, that proves that there's benefits to it, that we're not saying that it's not true. It's no. just overrated. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. you're splitting hairs on the difference. I mean, uh, you have to have so many things in line and, and working perfectly to, for that to matter. Well, yeah. what the studies show is that if you eat right after you work out, you replenish glycogen faster, uh, so glycogen being a, a form of uh, energy in your muscles, you replenish glycogen faster. But here's the other studies. The other studies show that if you eat later, you still replenish the glycogen. So the benefit, what's the benefit of eating right after you work out? The benefit is if you're going to work out again later. If you're going to work out again later, a lot of athletes do double days or mm -hmm. train twice a day, yeah. in which case it's important because for your next workout, you want to have glycogen and you want to be you know ready to go. But if you only work out once a day, it doesn't make that big of a difference. Here's the other benefit. I remember when we first started the podcast, Adam and I would talk about this all the time. This is back when you were competing quite yeah. a bit. And you used to argue, and I thought this was a great argument, that the post-workout meal was important for you because if you didn't have it, it then that meant you had to eat more for the next meal. So right. it was just the time. Right. I've been working out for a couple hours. It's time to eat. <clears throat> if I don't eat now, then dinner's going to have to be twice as big, which is going to be very That's difficult. the only place that I saw I saw that it made a lot of sense was, okay, here I am at that point when I remember when we're talking about this, I'm eating 5,000 calories roughly a day. And just think about how many meals and how big of meals that is. Mm -hmm. you, if I get behind, so if I'm not eating it, and this this goes back to the eating every two to three hour myth also. It's like, yeah, that's a myth and that's splitting hair is the difference to do something like that too. But when you have somebody who's having to consume that many calories, mm -hmm. yeah. I've got to stay on top of it. i got to be eating every two to three hours. So then if I drive, like, so if I have a meal, which I don't want to have a meal right before a workout. That's I'm not going to be uh, using it. I don't want to be, I don't want to throw up. So I want to have ate, ate a meal at least an hour to potentially two hours before a lift. Then you drive to the gym, you lift for an hour, hour and a half. Like when I was competing always around that time, especially if I was doing some post cardio stuff. And then to think I was going to drive home shower and then, and then go eat another meal. You're talking about a four hour potential gap that I'd have between meals, now I'm playing catch up on a thousand calories, right. is which is just crazy. So it always helped me to like have something right away post workout. Mm -hmm. And then when I got home, I would eat again to stay on top of it. Right. That, that makes sense to me. Right. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, why is this oversold? Because then my, someone listening might be like, well, then why are we why are we being sold so hard to have a post workout? Supplement company. Oh, it's brilliant marketing, right? Yeah. So bars and shakes. That's it. If you sell this idea hard enough to people that you have to have protein right after you work out to tap into this you know, magical muscle building anabolic window. If you sell that hard enough, here's what people will realize. They're going to go to the gym and they're going to be like, oh man, it's going to take me an hour before I can eat because I got to go home. I got to whatever. Um, that means I have to prep my food and bring it with me to the gym. And then I'm not going to have a microwave to warm it up. What, what else could I possibly do? Oh, a shake. That's perfect, right? Yeah. Protein shake. Much we easier. We provide the you know the the product that's perfect for you to have post workout, and so they sold this hard, knowing that it would sell shakes and bars. Uh, the reality is, it doesn't make that. You, believe it or not, too, there's also a, a small category of people. This is a bad idea. Yeah, right. I was glad you brought that up because that was mm -hmm. something I remember. We I think who was that? Was it Rob Wolf or who did we talk to? Uh, I we, believe it uh, might have been Chris Cresser. Oh, was it Cresser? Yeah. I remember it was one of those guys that we talked to and talked about. You know, nobody talks about. You know, after you train, especially if you train intensely, like mm -hmm. CrossFit or a high intensity workout, the inflammation that's going on in the body, and then it, that puts you at, at risk of potentially inflaming the gut, right? If you take in a protein shake right away. Well, and then you have leaky gut. Right. Because you're eating food, you're already in an inflamed state, the gut is not uh, functioning as well. And so if you have, if you're prone to gut issues or if you're having gut issues, you might want to wait an hour or so for the inflammation to come down before you eat. So, uh, so aside from that, it's oversold, not that big of a deal. Um, if you like a post-workout meal, uh, go for it. I, I like it. I like having a post-workout meal. It's like, it's a nice way for me to finish my workout. Um, but if you don't, no big deal. Next question is from Janky Garage Gym. What are some good measurable mobility goals? I like this question. And, you know, I don't know if this person has, uh, maps prime or prime pro, but, in Prime and Prime Pro, uh, there's test, and and this is the best way to do mm -hmm. this is you know there's test and then there's exercises and mobility drills that we give people to improve the mobility of the joint where they don't have great mobility, 
And so the idea is that you have these these tests that you take and you retest and you keep and you track you check, you know, and I would I would recommend checking back like every month to see if you're making progress and progress means being able to complete the test. Most mm -hmm. people that will take our MAPS Prime test will fail at least one, if not all three tests on there. So the goal is to be able to get to a place where you don't fail it. Or like, let's use our Prime Pro example where we have nine different tests in there that address every single joint. Some of the exercises in there, you may not even be able to perform. So making progress in that, these are great goals. Like a, <clears throat> one that's really challenging for me that Justin does really well is, what's the, what's the name, Justin, of the shoulder mobility exercise where you're really close to the wall? Wall tests. Oh, Just yeah, wall, wall circle. circles. Yeah, oh, wall, wall circles. circles. Yeah. Wall circles are really, really tough for me to complete. I can't even complete them all the way around as well as Justin does. And so when I, when I watch him do that in the video... I, and I know that I've been doing my mobility work for my shoulders. That's what I'm, I'm, my, I'm, my goal is to get to that place where I can do that as well as he does. And every time <clears throat> I go back and test, I, sometimes I take, I test and I see, I take steps back because I haven't been addressing mobility. And then sometimes I know when I've been putting the working in because I've progressed and I've gotten closer to that. Yeah. That's what I love about, you know, us having two different programs like that. So the first one, you know, just prime, it's, it's a lot more basic. It's like, uh, you know, these three movements that are very challenging and, and there's lots of nuances that are going on uh, in the body as you're going and performing these movements, but can you control your body uh, to, to get into that position for one, and then be comfortable in that position and then now own that position by being able to, uh, you know, contract your muscles and be able to get out with with, with strength. And so, uh, you know, we highlight a lot of, you know, things that potentially may be pulling you out of that position or things to, to really look into. And then that's where Prime Pro, we can get even more specific with yeah. joint by joint type of movements. Yeah, I would say, you know, remember, this was a challenge for us when we created Maps Prime. It's like, how do we, how do we, generalize this right because yeah uh, you know the other question is you know when you ask for what are good mo you know measurable mobility goals is well what what are you looking to do right are you an athlete there's mm -hmm. a different standard versus if you're just the regular person but generally speaking on maps and by the way you can go to maps prime webinar uh, dot com so maps prime webinar dot com justin will take you through the three that i'm going to tell you right now one of them is a squat squat is a wonderful uh, test of mobility, especially for the lower body, but it, it does use the whole body. Then there's a windmill, um, and then there's a wall test. Um, so all three of those kind of covers the whole body. So if you go on mapsprimewebinar.com, you'll follow along, and then you'll be able to see where you have your breakdown um, in terms of mobility. So I would say those three, generally speaking, are probably good for most people. Next question is from Derringer Thomas. What are the best stretches for flat feet? Well, you're looking at stretches, mobility, and strengthening, right? Mm -hmm. So flat feet uh, can be caused by poor ankle mobility, but also from just having weak feet. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, it's funny. Uh, for 99% of my career as a trainer, I totally didn't even think about the fact that the bottom of your foot – is covered in muscles. I didn't mm -hmm. even think about that. It was like and like seven thousand nerves. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean it was. I didn't even look at the, anybody's foot when I assess people. It stop. It was at. It was the knee was the lowest mm -hmm. I went. And was, might hey, as well be covered in concrete. Totally yeah. right. So um, I didn't pay attention to that at all. So there are muscles on the bottom of your foot that can be strengthened. There's a movement called short foot, which helps you contract some of the muscles that create an arch. In fact, that's the movement. Short foot is giving your foot an arch. I, when I first tried short foot, I couldn't even do it. You might as well tell me to fly. It's like I didn't even know what I was doing. I had no connection to those muscles. But through practice, I can now do short foot, and I've given myself a little bit more of an arch. The other thing I, I said was ankle mobility. Mm -hmm. um, combat stretch is a great uh, mobility movement to help improve mobility in ankles. Those two things for a lot of people help yeah. fix flat well, feet. Yeah, and just getting more connection there to your foot and activation is uh, articulating each one of your toes individually, which sounds really simple and basic, but it's pretty challenging, especially... So uh, hard. Yeah, for, for anybody who's been stuffed in shoes forever, and uh, I know, like, so I have a hammer toe, and so I, I have a tendency <laughs> to really grab in, uh, and so I have a really hard time flexing my my toes and uh, that, this is a very challenging exercise for me that I had to go through, but it, it totally uh, made a difference in terms of my connection, my grounding, and my force production from my feet. Sounds like a pro wrestling move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> here comes Justin with the hammer toe. I don't, know, I don't know if my son is here right now or not. I think that Katrina and him are coming down here. But you, I, I have, just since we're talking about this, and I was just thinking about this yesterday, is like, so he is now. I've trained him so well with no shoes. I know you're so proud of it. And you did such a good job. I am. <laughs> I am proud of this because he. Won't, it's so funny because now yeah. like other family members and they watch him. They he won't put his shoes on. He'll they'll try and put his shoes on. He'll take them off. So he doesn't wear shoes ever. Like oh, ever, ever, great. ever. Only time I can get him to put them on is if we are like out in the snow up in Truckee or something yeah. like that. And it is to see the dexterity that he has in his toes. Like his his feet and toes move like my hands do. Mm -hmm. It is. I'm so jealous of watching. And I'll like play with him and tickle him and mess with him. And he can spread his toes all the way out and move them all. Crit. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, it's so awesome. Great. And I feel like when I look at the way he moves. You know, I know we were joking the other podcast today when I said, oh, did you see his footwork when he was playing yeah, basketball? Yeah. But his uh, his control and stability, like he really didn't go through. I watched my other two friends, and they, they and they, I remember when they said, like, uh, when he first started kind of walking and running around, they're like, oh, my God, you're going to go crazy because you're going to, you know, be so worried he's going to hit his head here and fall there. And I really didn't go through a phase like that. As soon as he could get to a place where he could walk pretty well, of course we had a first couple weeks, mm -hmm. the, the stability of, like, learning to walk. Once he had got it down, he's got great control where he does not stumble. And the only times that we've had issues is when we've put shoes. Because he doesn't on. have that feedback. Yes, yeah. we've given we've put shoes on him. That one time when he fell and he hit his head and Katrina freaked out because blood came out and everything was she put shoes on him and he he best, he squatted down to pick up mm. a rock and he fell forward because of the instability. So, anyways, the uh, yeah. reason I, I want to share just the importance of you know walking around barefoot. Uh, and and I, what I don't recommend is somebody who has weak, flat feet to go from you know wearing your big old you know sketcher shoes to all of a sudden and then you know, walk with a bunch of dead feet. Yeah, well, yeah. and then go running on a treadmill with those Vibra shoes or whatever yeah. they're called, you know, and saying or go barefoot exercise. Like you know, just start by and I, for me the way this started was I would just I would walk the dogs, you know, because that's only a short little five ten minute walk for me, and I would do it barefoot. I get out. I take him out on the grass, and and I'd walk around and just start to get that connection again. Mm -hmm. um, I took one out of a, one of my buddy who's a who's a PT. He used to do this exercise that is really challenging, but seems so basic. You can do it while you're watching TV, and you throw a towel or some tissue paper on the ground, and you just you try and pick it up. Mm. And you move it, and then you take the other the other foot, pick it up, and you move it. And just like Justin was saying, is is reestablishing that connection to being able to articulate the toes and the foot. To me, that's the kind of the laying the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then once you start to kind of get that and you start to progress that, now we can really try and strengthen, which I then I think of things like short foot or I love tippy toe squats. Yeah. I love that because I'm always yeah, trying to practice up. squatting anyways and getting better. And that addresses both uh, ankle stability yeah. and strength in addition. Your as and well. your forefoot all yeah. in, in one movement. And uh, there's good video. I think, I, I think I've done a video on my Instagram way back when. I believe Squat University. I think I stole some content from them that I thought was really good where uh, you take a quarter and you put it on the ground. You put two quarters down on the ground, like where you would you put your feet to squat, and you want it on the uh, your fat pad, right under where your uh, the big where, toe, yeah, where the big toe is, and you're and you're trying to think of driving up from that. And when you drive up onto your tippy toes, the thing you're looking for is that you can keep the ankle neutral. What you'll see is a lot of people when they drive up on their tippy toes, they break out or in. Yep. And yeah. so you want to keep that stability while you're up on your tippy toes, and so that yeah. just doing. You can also get a lacrosse ball to, to put between. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. Yes. So between like above your ankles, but like you're squeezing it in between your feet and you're raising your heels like that. So I've done and performed some some tippy toe squats like that as well. One other thing too with the the flat foot, I've noticed like when I I, I used to get this every now and then when I'd gain weight, like uh, going into the off season, and I would go back to running, and I would find myself like really running it on. On uh, flat foot and, mm. and and losing that connection, and so you know that might be another contributing factor is a gain of it's weight. It's so crazy how much. And Sal alluded to this about when it was it was Doctor Brink who, like, I think just like uh, shattered all of our paradigms with with how important the foot is and really looking at that because and and now I can't help but walk behind somebody and just look at the wear on their soles of their shoes mm -hmm. and like know what's probably going on with them because if you've got flat feet and you've got you're pronating more on one side or the other you can just basically you know, ping pong up the uh, kinetic chain and know that, oh, their their left knee probably bothers them here. Oh, their right hip is probably bothering mm -hmm. here. Oh, their low back on this side and then show. It's crazy how much 
that if if you are not if you're not really on that tripod and balanced well on your feet how that could be causing pain in areas in your body that's way away from it and so you would be, and even as a trainer I would just a client told me they had a, a you know shoulder or hip or low back issue I, I would never think to go look at their feet yep. where now that's the very first thing that I look at when someone tells me about any pain is I first look down there and see is this where it's stemming from and then it's causing it all the way up Next question is from Dr. Stewie Quads. Have you ever had to change your circle in order to improve your mental health and well-being? Oh. Circle of friends? Is that, yeah, that's what be. I'm assuming, yeah. That's this is a this is one of the toughest uh, things that you're going to you might have to do in order to improve yourself. Um, I know for people for example who have issues with smoking, uh, one and they want to quit. One of the one of the most effective in the studies will show this. One of the most effective things you could do is stop hanging around with smokers, um, and you'll find that mm -hmm. you're less likely to smoke. Um, I used to, you know, I, I've got a lot of cousins, and you know, we all used to like to hang out and stuff like that. And I start, I got into my career very early um, in fitness. I was a trainer at 18, 19. I was managing trainers and then gyms, and you know, we were at the, you know, our, our, our teens, early 20s, that's when guy, you know, people like to go out and hang out and party and whatever. And I just, my, my goals and focus were different than theirs. And so I stopped hanging out with them because my focus was on my career and on fitness and managing gyms. And it wouldn't have worked if I kept going out with them and hanging out at the bars and stuff. It just wouldn't have worked. So yeah, I mean, I've done it and you, you have to do it. And, uh, you know, Adam says this all the time. You're the, what is it, the sum total of the Which five closest the people? Average, I was going to say, you're the average of the five yeah. people that you you hang out with. Here's, I think, I don't think this is a you may have to do. I think everybody, if you're going to continue to grow and evolve, mm -hmm. you will not only have to do this, but you'll probably do this multiple times in mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. Because it, because otherwise, are you really the same person you were when you were 18? The friends that and 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 that's not a knock on on the people that I was hanging out because I still have a love for those people, but it's as you growing, yeah, as as you continue to grow and push yourself, and if you do believe that you are an average of the people, the five people you hang around the most, that even if you love <clears throat> love that one guy or girl that you you've known since she was fifteen or he was fifteen, and you're now forty. Mm -hmm. Um, but they have some bad habits or, and I'll give you an example of the, for me that the, the last, the last, you know, friend, and, and they, I still consider them a friend. Like I would just talk to him like, uh, about a month ago. Right. So I, when, I think when you, um, you know, change your circle, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to like break up with them. It doesn't need to be this, like, we can't be friends anymore because I've outgrown you. Get like, on a phone with them. Yeah. It's yeah. Dramatic. It doesn't need to be like that. You just ghost them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, easier. Well, I, I mean, the, this friend that I'm, I'm talking about. So I've, I've talked on the show before that I like the sports gamble. Right. So that's like a thing of mine. And, uh, I like anything, uh, th something like that can turn into a serious addiction and an issue and a problem. I like to think I'm a pretty self-aware person. And so I really, monitor a lot of those things in my life and i remember a few years back this is like five five years or so go back maybe six and it was like a, a tuesday afternoon and i'm and i was hanging out a lot with this buddy of mine and uh he, him and i were at like a sports bar on a tuesday and i was betting pretty big money on some you know like a, a like a wizards game versus uh, i don't even remember who it was like the like memphis grizzlies i would never even watch that game is that a real team yeah those are both real teams. <laughs> Sounds like, like a just, Dungeons and Dragons. And I feel like you just made up two teams. <laughs> no, right? no. And, and, Wizards versus Warlocks. And, <laughs> you know, yeah. Basketball. And so I, I remember I had this moment of that, you know, I know that I, and I was like, what the hell am I doing? Gambling this kind of, any money, much less the amount of money I was gambling. Do you want to tell us how much? <laughs> no, it's, it's no, because I don't want to hear you give me shit. <laughs> it's, it's irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely way more than you would ever spend on probably anything for yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so anyways, uh, I, and I think I even won, but that wasn't the point. The point was, what am I doing, right? What am I doing here on a Tuesday in a bar, gambling on a game I don't even care about? about it. I've, I, it's now turned into more of an addiction. And I know that that's influenced because of the person I hang out with. Now I'm in control of my own decisions. He didn't force me to do that, but because I were hanging out so much, he does that so much. It's really easy for me to get sucked mm -hmm. in. And that's just I think, one example of how that could be happening in your circle. And what I had to do was I had to, to eliminate us hanging out. doesn't mean I, we broke up or I don't still talk to him or ask him how his wife and kids, he just had another baby, how he's doing. Like, 
but I stopped hanging out with him on a regular basis. And I replaced that with somebody like a Justin or a Sal or a Doug in my life who I think is going to have a better influence on me that I think have other aspects of their life that I aspire to be like or I want in my life. And so that's what you got to continually do, be doing. And if you're always growing, I feel like that circle is always yeah. molding and kind of changing. Yep. Yeah, not really like evaluating uh, that is a disservice to your growth. It's going to limit your growth. Uh, it's a hard thing to do. It's it's something because it's so comfortable. It's it's you know it already. Like you know, you, you're sort of this person around those people too, and so you don't really want to let go of that person either. Oh, yeah. So you Good feel point. like you know, like I, well, I'm funny, and or I'm uh, you know, it's easy, it's comfortable, uh, you know, hanging out because like I can just be myself, quote unquote. But uh, you know, if you're really trying to uh, uh, you know strive for change and and become something, uh, it, you know greater it's going to require some 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 hard transition and so it's 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 hard to do that you're totally right you ever do that where you like there's a circle of friends and you kind of you grow you know you outgrow them or whatever you don't you're not around them a lot then all of a sudden you run into them you hang out and you find yourself slipping revert back to this weird person yeah like why am i talking this way why am i like doing this kind of stuff and i I feel like people who are uh really into self-improvement probably go through this process more often Uh, multiple times yeah Uh, i totally agree i mean i I try to give you guys something that's the most recent that's happened to me but this has happened so many times in my life i mean my original friends um we grew up what we were best friends of mine in high school and the things that connected to us was competitive sports and that we just went to the same high school i mean but we and partying like those were the those were like the three main things that we were super bonded by, mm-hmm. and what happened was as we all got older and you're partying less, you're not going to these, you're not playing sports anymore. You have kids now. Yeah, yeah, all this shit starts happening, and then you realize that the things that you guys did with each other, talk shit to each other, put each other down, you know, because you thought it was funny in high school and stuff, <laughs> yeah. and you start to realize like, geez, I'm a grown ass man now. Like I don't yeah, want a friend. I don't need this. Yeah, I don't need a friend who's like <laughs> cutting me low every time he sees me or not happy no, for my you success. Suck. Yeah, like. <laughs> Yeah, but yet you get sucked into it because you have these other bonds with them. Yeah. And a lot of times those bonds are, are are attachments that you have because of mutual insecurities. And until you have the self-awareness to, to see that and recognize that, it's hard to, to break free from this. But if you're going to see continued growth in your life... I absolutely agree, Sal. This is not something that's probably going to happen once. It's going to happen several times in your life, and you should probably be seeking that. It is, and I, I, I think the the people that you end up staying close with forever are probably growers with you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah, they're seeking the same thing. Yeah, they're also growing, and they're respecting your growth. And you know, because people who aren't growers, they get threatened by it. You know, like yeah, what do you mean? Showers. Yeah, what do you mean you're not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna come hang out? You know, and do this at you know midnight or whatever. You know, and you're like, well, I'm a dad now, or whatever. And they won't respect that, and you can tell that they're not respecting. Oh yeah, they give you shit for it right. instead of going like, oh, being happy. Exactly. For you. Right. So you know, I personally I like to surround myself now as I'm older. I like to be with other growers, even if I have less in common with them because Mm -hmm. if we have that in common we build a bond that could last forever and i find myself when i hang out like with you guys like you know when we started mind pump i'll tell you what i grew more in the last five years oh yeah than i did in the previous i don't know same how many because everybody here is is such a grower that it it makes me do the same thing and that's that's our bond i mean the, the truth is i don't have a whole lot besides working out and fitness in common with uh with uh, you know all you guys but one thing we have in common is we, we tend to want to be growers and so i'd say if you want to find a circle that'll stick around you probably want to find another circle of people who prioritize uh, yeah, and the beauty of the beauty of that is mm-hmm. that it will uh accelerate so much good in your life uh when you when you find that when oh, you yeah. find that the, cause, absolutely because those people that are like that they're going to they're pick you up when you're down and encourage you when when things aren't going well celebrate your victories yeah. like mourn your losses yeah, yeah. no 100 percent. so uh, That's how, i mean justin when we first met he's like hey sal are you a grower and i was like huh yeah yeah <laughs> show me yeah, show. <laughs> look mind pump is recorded on video as well as audio come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug the producer at Mind Pump Doug. Well, don't forget the goal can change, right? So, I mean, I like the idea of setting like a long-term goal, but making short-term decisions based off that goal. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have this massive goal of, you know, I want to lose 50 or 100 pounds at one point. That's fine, but you're not going to focus on that. You're going to focus on the short-term decisions. What, Like you said, what can I do tomorrow? Mm-hmm. And you set these 